Hello everybody, my name is Mohanad Sarek and today we'll be talking about how to measure the QRS axis on an ECG. Part of interpreting a 12 lead ECG is to understand the P wave and QRS axis. Axis refers to the overall vector of electrical current in the atria or the ventricles. A normal axis of the P wave tells us that electrical signal is moving in a normal fashion in the atrium. A normal axis of a QRS tells us that electrical signal is moving in a normal expected fashion in the ventricles. There are conditions that would shift the axis either leftwards or rightwards, and we'll be discussing those today. In order to understand how we look at electrical vectors of the heart, it's important to understand when a QRS complex is positive in a lead and when it's negative in a lead. When a QRS deflection is above the baseline, that's a positive deflection, meaning that the currents are moving towards the lead. When the QRS deflection is negative below the baseline, that's a negative deflection, meaning that the QRS vector is moving away from the lead. For example, if we take lead one, which is the vector between the right arm and the left arm, if the electrical signal is moving from the right side to the left side, the QRS will be positive, meaning that the overall area within the QRS is positive. There is more positive than negative. If the vector of electrical current is moving opposite of lead one, meaning from the left arm to the right arm, then the QRS complex will be overall negative, meaning the area is more negative than positive. Now, if the overall deflection is isoelectric, meaning the area under the QRS is equally positive and negative, that means that the electrical signal must be moving perpendicular to the lead. By looking where the QRS is positive and where it's negative, we can understand how the electrical signal is moving in the long longitudinal plane of the heart. Now, when we look at the QRS vector, it's important to understand that under normal circumstances, the left ventricle is what determines the vector because the majority of the muscle mass is in the left ventricle. So it's expected that the vector will be moving down and to the left. And if we split the longitudinal plane into four axes, we expect the electro electrical signals to be moving towards the bottom left quadrant, somewhere between minus 30 and plus 90 degrees, which is what a normal vector is. So how can we tell if the axis is normal or not? Well, we look at leads one and lead two. These are the two leads you need to determine the axis. Lead one is the lead going from the right arm to the left arm. If lead one is positive, then you know that the, then you know that the electrical signal is moving from the right arm to the left arm and it must be traveling right to left. So the axis must be anywhere between minus 90 degrees and plus 90 degrees. Then we look at lead two, and lead two is the vector from the right arm to the left leg. And if lead two is positive, we know that the electrical signal must be traveling in the direction of minus 30 to plus 150, which is towards the bottom left. If both leads one and lead two are positive, then the overall direction of the vector must be between minus 30 degrees and plus 90 degrees, and that is a normal QRS axis. So, in summary, if you look at leads one and lead two, and they're both positive, the axis of the QRS is normal. The same applies to the P wave. As we discussed in a prior lecture, if the P wave is positive in leads one and leads two, it must be coming from the top right, because if the axis of the P wave is positive in leads one and lead two, then the signal must be coming from the top right towards the bottom left, and it's likely coming from the sinus node. So let's talk about if the axis is abnormal. Well, one of the common abnormalities is having left axis deviation. When you have left axis deviation, you'll find that lead one remains positive, and the, the electrical vector is still moving towards the left side of the body. However, lead two is now negative. And if you combine the two, you'll find that the electrical vector is now moving to the direction of minus 30 to plus 90 degrees. So it's shifted to the left compared to normal. There are certain conditions that will cause left axis deviation. And these conditions either reduce the electrical signals in the bottom of the heart so that there's more signal traveling to the top left, or they increase the electrical signals on the left side of the heart so that more signals tra travel towards the left than the right. Some of these conditions include left ventricular hypertrophy, left anterior fascicular block, left bundle branch block, an inferior wall myocardial infarction, or pre-excitation that occurs in the presence of an accessory pathway. The QRS axis can also shift towards the right. In this case, 
lead 1 will be negative and lead 2 will be positive. When lead 1 is negative, the electrical vector is moving towards the right side of the body. And when lead 2 is positive, the overlap is somewhere between plus 90 and plus 150 degrees, which means that the axis has shifted slightly to the right. And on ECG, you'll see a negative deflection in lead 1 and the positive deflection in lead 2. Things that cause right axis deviation are either things that reduce the electrical signals on the left side of the heart or increase the electrical signals on the right side of the heart. For example, anything that increases the size or strain on the right ventricle. Some of these causes include newborn children where the right ventricle is relatively larger, right ventricular hypertrophy, acute RV strain, for example, pulmonary embolism, chronic RV strain, for example, COPD or pulmonary hypertension, left posterior fascicular block, and lateral wall myocardial infarction, pre-excitation, which is the presence of an accessory pathway. Switched arm electrodes is also a cause of right axis deviation and situs inversus. There are times when we can have extreme axis deviation, meaning both leads one and lead two are negative. And in this case, lead one being negative tells you that the vector is moving from left to right, and lead two being negative tells you that the vector is moving from bottom left to bottom right. And when you put those together, then the vector is moving from 150 degrees Celsius to minus 90 degrees Celsius. This is an extremely abnormal axis because the electrical signal in the ventricle is traveling from the bottom left to the top right, which is opposite of normal. How can that happen? Well, it's very unlikely. And things that can cause that include either lead misplacement, so the leads were switched around in the body such that the axis is abnormal and one should check the leads, or it's an abnormal rhythm such as ventricular tachycardia, where the signals are actually coming from the bottom of the ventricles. So in summary, to look at the axis of the QRS, you only need to look at leads one and lead two. If both are positive, then you have a normal axis. If lead one is positive and two is negative, you have left axis deviation. If lead one is negative and lead two is positive, you have right axis deviation. And if both are negative, you have extreme axis deviation. I hope that was useful. Please like and subscribe our videos. Thank you very much.